So our simulator has just finished uh, running through the setup and it's got to the password prompt even though there have been a few additional messages since then. Um, that's relatively normal and you might see some warnings about tape drives and so on. Uh, again, it's all normal stuff, don't worry about it too much. So at this point, I just want to go back to the uh, the slides. Just uh, go to the next one. So we did our initial networking config. Uh, we're going to look at networking in a little bit more detail in a different module. Uh, we've done some relatively simple setup. Uh, we're going to look at how to connect via file view, systems manager and command line very shortly, then go into licensing the filer. Uh, and then after that, we're going to look at how to set up the second simulator and when why we need to take a backup. Uh, so just going back to this uh, simple setup, this is where you're going to basically need your um, Windows 7 machine. So I'm just going to minimize the, the slides there. And firstly, the the way that we connect to uh, the simulator for, for file view has, has changed slightly. You might have been used to just being able to type in HTTP and then go to the IP address. Now we actually have to use HTTPS. Uh, the file is a little bit more secure by default these days, uh, as you saw with the password um, issue when we was setting up. So we're going to the, the IP address. Again, we can just uh, go direct to the IP address and then click on any admin. Uh, and then we just log in with the password uh, root and password that we set up uh, during the setup. So we've got our file view. And again, the, um, the simulator is different this time in that we used to have a little menu here with our license keys built in. It's no longer the case, unfortunately. I thought it was a pretty pretty cool option, but they've, they've dropped it anyway. So just open up file view. So we've got our our system ready, and uh, even though we're getting an, an error at the moment, we're going to sort that out, no problem. Uh, so one thing to make a note of is the system ID, 987654320. Now that's the same every time you build a simulator, and that's actually what's going to cause us a problem when we're going to try and uh, build a second simulator, because effectively we'll have two simulators with the same system ID, which is going to cause us problems later down the line if we don't address it. So Yep, at this point uh, we've got our simulator up and working. Uh, one thing that we do potentially want to do is install the uh, system management tool from NetApp. So that's uh, available on the Now site to download. Uh, and we can just, if we jump back to the Now site. So that's available in the download section, the software. And you will actually. Um, in the real world, you would need to, uh, well, you'd, you'd need a, a now account anyway to, to access the um, the simulator, I guess. So that shouldn't be an issue, but it's in System Manager, if I can never seem to find it, System Manager, and you just download it there for Windows. Now, I've already downloaded it uh, in advance. It's a relatively large-ish file to be shown during the simulator, uh, during a session like this. So I'm just going to pause the video and briefly copy the file to my desktop. So I've got the System Manager 1.1 1 .1, um, R1 on my desktop. The System Manager 2 beta is out. Uh, if you want to do a bit of uh, sort of testing, um, it's not it's not something that I'd use in production at the moment, uh, but it does support some of the uh, different features to what System Manager set 1.1 uh, 1 .1 is going to support, such as Snap Mirror setup and so on. Anyway, uh, we're going to run through the setup very briefly. Going to select next, agree to the end, end user license. It's fine where it's going. Um, I'm just going to next it until we have it installed. Um, we also are going to need uh, putty for command line. So I'm just going to very quickly jump onto um, Google and grab a copy of putty. So this is a, a very quick download. Just need the putty.exe. I'm just going to save that to our desktop. Apologies for the noise in the background there. Sounds like the bin men are here. Uh, so the system manager is installed. So I'm going to delete the, the installation file from my VM. I've also downloaded Putty. Now Putty doesn't actually require installing, so that's all good. So we're just going to fire up system manager 1.1. 1, uh, 1 .1. 
and the first thing that we're going to need to do is add our storage system in so you can either discover uh, your storage system or just add it by IP address I already know the IP address so I'm not going to leave it scanning just add that in so ask me to log in I'm going to save my storage system credentials whether you choose to do that in the real world is an entirely different matter and we've just got the uh, the basics up um, so at the moment we're, we're good to go the the next thing that we need to do really is go into configuration when it sorts itself out uh, and into system tools and into licenses and I'm just going to go through and license up um, the majority of the things that we're going to run through um, just because basically we're going to need them at, at, at various points I seem to have closed the document actually um, so we're going to need these licenses to be set up at various points throughout the training so we might as well just add them all now rather than keep going back to the licensing doc so uh, just briefly just to show how a license is added let's take the key I'm going to go into system manager licenses add and just paste that in and it's going to add a few extra things in such as the SIFS diagnostic and the SIFS protocol and also if we had um, any volumes and so on it would add uh, the shares tab in there as well anyway um, at this point I'm like I say I'm just going to pause the video add in the licenses and then we will resume um, when the licenses are all added uh, unfortunately we're going to need to do this twice as I say on the other simulator but uh, we'll take a back up at that point anyway so we don't need to do it ever again so I've been through and licensed up what's available and working on the simulator in 8.0.1 um, there are a few things that don't work and are unsimulatable such as fiber channel protocol and uh, high availability clustering and so on at the moment which is um, a bit a bit lame but at the same time it does you know give us plenty of functionality to be, to be playing with so as you can see uh, various bits and pieces have been added in and that's all good um, so yep we've looked at uh, how to connect via file view and system manager so I'm just going to very quickly show you how to do it from command line uh, putty run and we need to just put in the host name and in this case we're going to go via IP address I'm going to take a quick copy of that we want it to go in via SSH uh, which is the secure shell which is um, the preferred way of connecting to a filer we want to go into window and just change this lines of scroll back to 20,000 um, that's just a little tip for the real world as well uh, it just allows you to do um, scroll back effectively scroll up the window which we'll have a look at as and when we're using file view so I'm just going to save that double click it yeah we need to accept this uh, this alert and uh, we always get that whenever we connect to a new filer so we just log in and that's effectively the the command prompt um, we can just do sysconfig for example and just uh, very quickly show some of the output um, there's not not much it, that we've got available at the moment because we've not created any aggregates or volumes or anything or um, we've just basically licensed up a few features so uh, the next thing that we're going to do is have a look at installing the second simulator and I guess uh, at this point actually we'll take a quick snapshot of our uh, existing simulator so that we've got a working copy in case anything goes wrong so just click on the, the simulator uh, that's live and go to VM snapshot take snapshot I'm just going to call it snapshot one call it whatever you want and just let it go off in the background so whilst that's snapshotting um, we just need to basically power on the VM that we're concerned with uh, the second VM and it, straight away when it comes up with the prompt where it says press enter we're going to need to just press any other key uh, to get to the sim loader menu so let's quickly power that on and you do have to be relatively on the ball with this just click in and again just wait for the prompt so there we go so we're at the sim loader and at this point uh, I just need to quickly grab the command as it's not something I do every day um, let's just see so at this point we just need to go to set uh, sys serial num equals and we're going to do 111 111 111 111 
All good. So effectively, all that's done is, is change the serial number on the system. And we're, we're just then typing boot. And at this point, we're going to need to quickly catch the control C menu. And uh, in terms of overall setup of the simulator, it's the, the second simulator. It's very similar. We're just changing the, the, the name of the, uh, the filer and the IP addresses. So just wait for it to, to pop up with the, with the menu. And again, I'm going to pause through this video as you don't want to sit and watch it twice. Um, I guess perhaps the the um, yeah, I guess perhaps the only thing that's that's really different on this is uh, well, yeah. One one thing that I would say is if you make a mistake on your simulator, if if at any point you've not taken a backup and you want to restart from 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 fresh or from scratch. Uh, don't actually go through and rebuild the simulator using the option four menu. It will take ages, talking hours, uh, depending on size of your disks and stuff like that, and speed of your hard disk, etc. The quickest way, honestly, if you want to get back to a fresh from scratch uh, install, is literally just to stop the VM, delete it, and re-extract the zip file um, into a separate folder, and just start again and, and reset the disks that way. Um, literally, it takes takes hours or at least an hour to do to do a, a disk zero it's just not worth it on the simulator so yeah at this point i'm going to pause the video and i'm going to resume when i'm putting uh, any any data in there so it's uh, it's prompting me now for the host name i'm just going to call it netapp2 just so you can see that we're uh, going through it as a very similar setup uh, the only thing that we're changing is 192.168.0.221 and we're going to go through 224 um, but aside from that, the setup is identical to all the other setups that you watched, uh, all the other interface setups, etc. So I'm going to uh, pause this video and resume when this simulator is completed installation. So really, just to finish up uh, in this module, we're going to look at um, the second simulator, just taking a snapshot of that. It's just finished off installing, uh, so the, we, we want to take a snapshot just for in case anything goes wrong, basically. Uh, and then we go back to our Windows 7 and we just need to make sure that we can connect to that simulator from both command line, file of view and uh, system manager. So just going to very quickly do a command line to there. We can just do a load on our um, existing setup. Change this to 221. Let's just change that there. Do a save. That will also remember our 20,000 line scroll back very quickly test that we can log in all good see if we can ping 192.168.0.131 which we can so we're all good there uh, we'll just add in the second simulator into system manager and the last thing that we're going to need to do after that is just uh, go in and, and add the licenses so 192.168.0.221 so we've got our second simulator and if you've if you've uh, Done the, if you've not actually followed that guide where I showed you how to change the system ID, effectively you're going to get um, a problem where you've got two simulators with the same ID, so it won't actually add. You can only add one or the other, uh, and that also causes a few problems elsewhere. Um, so, like I said, the last thing that we're, we're going to need to do is just add in the licenses, and again, the licenses are um, they're all the same. We're going to use the same keys. And that's that's uh, just the way the simulators work. So just to show you how to do it from the command line, license add, and then we can uh, just add them that way, or you can do it the the other way through System Manager. So, or you can even do it through File View if you're so inclined. So, yep, that's basically uh, the setup of our simulator environment. Um, unfortunately, like I say, there's certain things that aren't simulatable at the moment, uh, and when they come available, I'll do a separate video on them. Um, but that's basically setting up the filers for the rest of this course. So um, with that said, see you in the next module.